This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. A covert special forces unit joins an international team of undercover investigators. Hopefully we can just keep rolling them. To hunt a notorious sex trafficking ring. Their mission is to save thousands of women forced to be sex slaves. They don't know they'll be beaten. They don't know that they could be murdered. They don't know they could be gang raped. Their target is a sex ring. Oh, she's get her, get her. Earning millions of dollars trafficking women from Central Asia. A ring that will kill to survive. Bangkok, Thailand. The place the Thais call the City of Angels. An economic hub. A trading center for goods from every corner of the globe. But at night, Bangkok transforms. Sex is one of this city's most lucrative commodities. That's what many of the foreign men who travel here come for. Most women do the work willingly. But the sex trade in Bangkok has a truly dark side. Every minute, a woman or child is trafficked into sex slavery. Many of them here. Steve Galster heads the Freeland Foundation. Their mandate to hunt down animal traffickers brought him to Bangkok a decade ago. Today, he has a new target the brutal sex trafficking rings that use Thailand as their base. Sex trafficking is modern-day slavery. The issue is, once you are in a situation that you want to get out of and you can't, you lose your free will, you're a slave. There's about 1.5 million sex slaves in the world today. About half of those are in Asia, and a lot of them are right here in Thailand. One of the country's most notorious rings is run by Uzbeks. They lure women from their impoverished country with the promise of a legitimate job. Then they force them onto the street. Tonight, Galster is heading for a meeting with a confidential informant who's watching the ring. He can't risk being followed. This is an industry worth $35 billion worldwide. The traffickers will protect their profits at any cost. The stakes for everybody are really high on this operation. The people at the top of this chain, they've lost their humanity. I would love to see them behind bars. That's why I'm involved. This is crazy. It's the 21st century and we still got a lot of slavery going on. Galster meets the informant near the red light district. Despite the danger, the contact agrees to keep informing on the ring. There's very little room for failure in this operation because they're saying we're the untouchables. If we can touch them, we create a tidal wave of anti-human trafficking efforts in this region and they will realize that the game has changed. Steve Galster is not alone in his quest to bust the Uzbek ring. Joining him is a special team trained to fight terrorism. I don't really know who they are exactly because they are basically a Thai government unit that conducts black operations work. They infiltrate and try to take down mean, powerful individuals and uh, organizations. And working with them is a legendary figure. Two decades ago, General Chanfoot led the country's assault on the Russian Mafia. Today, Thailand's anti-human trafficking division has recruited him to help take down the Uzbek ring. 
ดังนั้นโรคจิตนี่มันควรจะอยู่ในสังคมคนธรรมดาไหมก็ต้องอิลิมิเนตกระจัดออกไปถูกไหมกระเทือนใจหมดต้องเป็นลูกหลานคนหนึ่งเป็นไงบ้างอิวส์เบกริงอิสโซเวลคอนเนคเต็ดอิสเอเบิลทูคอนดักต์บิสเนสโอเพนลีในดาวน์ทาวน์บังคอกคนตรงนี้มาทำไมฉันตรงกันแต่ผู้หญิงถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการควบคุมตัวเองในห้องโถงเสื้อผ้าและถูกควบคุมโดยการ General Chanford believes the ring is here because the hotel has a lot of Middle Eastern clients. He's discovered that if they want commercial sex, they often want a white Muslim woman rather than a Thai. For months, the general and his team have targeted the Grace Hotel. Tonight, he picks up a lead. An undercover hears about an Uzbek sex slave beaten for not making her bosses enough money. Word gets through that Steve Galster may be able to help. It takes days, but the woman finally contacts him, and he secretly brings her to a safe house. Her code name is M, and she's scared. The traffickers have her passport, so she can't leave Thailand. If they discover she's talking to Galster, they could hurt her and her family back in Uzbekistan. I cannot sleep now. Oh, think in passport ticket, where now? My photo picture, mama, baby. To help the police bust the traffickers, Galster's brought together an international team of investigators dubbed Operation Graceland. Their first task is to help M. On Kuri Kumar is the intelligence officer responsible for analyzing everything uncovered about the ring. Doug Peters is a former U.S. special agent. For 20 years, he worked undercover to bust some of America's most dangerous criminals. Natasha Ivanova is the team's translator, fluent in Russian and German. Problem not too much. I have. I won't finish this problem. Yeah, I understand. Galster learns that M is divorced. She has a son, but no way to care for him. Desperate for a job, she was tricked into coming to Bangkok, where she was handed over to a woman named Rano. M believes Rano is connected to the Uzbek ring. The task force agrees to help her recover her passport and escape. She promises to take them inside Bangkok's sex trafficking gangland and help them find Rano. I don't think it's going to take more than an hour. M knows that Rano works from a notorious Bangkok nightclub. Doug Peters believes he and Galster can get in wearing hidden cameras. Security is tight. Discovery of the cameras could put Galster and Peters in real danger. Thank you. Now the two men have to move fast. They must find Rano before she discovers that M has betrayed her and is trying to escape. Doug Peters and Steve Galster are secretly filming in a club near Bangkok's red light district. Their target is an Uzbek woman named Rano. They know this is a club that she often frequents. 
They're trying to find Rano so they can set up her arrest and help an Uzbek sex slave named M escape from Rano's control. In Thailand, a sex slave can earn her traffickers up to $1,000 a day while costing them almost nothing. It's the perfect crime, the commodities, if you will, pay for their own overhead. They pay for their rent, their food, they pay even for the right to have the job. Peters and Galster take a good look around the club. This is a place where Middle Eastern and Indian men go to meet women. The perfect venue for Rano. She's the friend of Nargiza from Grace and friend of Rano. Back at the safe house, M identifies key members of the Uzbek ring. Sure. That's Samira. We're trying to figure out which ones are the, the foot soldiers, which ones are the, the colonels, the mamasans, and trying to find our way through this labyrinth to Rano, who has beaten her up, taken her passport, money, and photos, and ticket, and also find her connections back to the gang that race. Okay, the fat bald guy. That's easy. They also find Rano. That's her. Yeah. All right, so we got her. Just showed the footage to M, and she said, "Yep, that's her." So now we're gonna go get the cops, take him back to the club, and arrest Rano. The local police want to keep a low profile to avoid a confrontation. So Peters agrees to go into the club and bring Rano out. Finally, he spots her at the back of the bar. At the police station, M insists on confronting the woman who deceived her and kept her here in Bangkok. The police decide there isn't enough evidence to charge Rano. She'll be released. But for M, the operation is a success. The least we've gotten out of tonight is a police report, so we can now get her a temporary passport and some basic cash to send her back home. M has also helped the task force. With her information, they've built a profile of the ring. It could help them and the police discover where the Uzbeks are vulnerable. M's been great, she's been very courageous. She took us into this underworld and showed us person by person and club by club who's who, how it operates, so we've put a lot of pieces of the structure together. While M has escaped, many women on the streets of Bangkok are still trapped. But not all women are forced into the sex trade. In Thailand, without a better way to earn a living, thousands enter it by choice. It's something Annie Dieselberg knows better than most. She runs an international organization called Nightlight. It's dedicated to helping former prostitutes leave the street and forget the past. These young women feel like they have no options in life. We're trying to offer her the freedom to choose, the freedom to live a better life, to pursue her dreams. Choices Dieselberg also wants to offer the Uzbek sex slaves. She's joined the task force to provide protection to any woman rescued. Tonight, Dieselberg is heading for the red light district, as she has for the last 17 years. If we get to know their story, it would only be because we've helped them out. Yeah, right. Otherwise, we only yeah. know little bits and pieces. Exactly. Yeah. But this outreach is different. Tonight, Dieselberg's taking a member of the task force right into the heart of the Uzbek operation. 
There's an Uzbek girl that just went down that way. Matt Friedman is the head of the United Nations Interagency Project on Human Trafficking. He's fought sex slavery for 25 years, driven by the memory of a 15-year-old girl in an Indian brothel. Once had a young girl actually see that I was there, come up to me and literally wrap herself around me um, and say, help me, help me, they're doing terrible things to me. Uh, I was with a police officer and I said, okay, well, this girl's coming with us. And he said, no, she isn't. In the world that we're in now, they're not going to let us leave. I said, come on, we've got to take her out. We left. Um, came back with more police, but she was gone. At the end of the day, that child needed somebody to help her, and I wasn't there. Straight ahead is one of the new girls. It's one of the controllers, the smaller one. That's why she totally ignored us. Tonight, Friedman's here because Dieselberg's discovered that the Uzbek ring is growing fast. Ten years ago, I would walk through the area, and I would see maybe five or six women in one place, but starting about four years ago, we could count as many as 80 women in a couple hours. Dieselberg's already had her life threatened by the Uzbek ring, but she and her team continue to offer a lifeline to any woman who wants help. And tonight, she picks up a rumor. An Uzbek woman is trying to escape from her traffickers. Friedman agrees to use his contacts to look for her. It could be the breakthrough the task force has been searching for. For days, Operation Graceland has been searching Bangkok for an Uzbek sex slave trying to escape from her traffickers. So, what do you got? Uh, I don't know, this is... Using his UN contacts, Matt Friedman thinks he might have found her. I had an interesting call last night. A young Uzbeki woman forced into kind of a prostitution ring. Her papers have been taken away. She's been threatened. Uh, this woman wants to get out, and she's desperate. Her code name is Anna, and it looks like she's not the only victim under the control of this ring. The task force is alerted and a message is sent to Anna. The plan is simple. Galster will make sure Anna is on the street. Then an undercover, posing as a customer, will pick her up and bring her to the safe house. A block away from the hotel, Galster spots three Uzbek women. One of them is Anna, guarded by her controller. How much is it? One thousand five hundred. For how long? One hour. Okay. After confirming that Anna is available, Galster calls in the undercover. Uh, English? Yes. For two, three hours, five thousand. Okay. You want to go with me? Three hours. Sir. Back at the safe house, despite her fear, Anna begins to talk. As suspected, she's under the control of the Uzbek ring. It was this ring that lured Anna to Thailand. A recruiter discovered that she was divorced with a young baby and offered her a job in Bangkok as an escort. Desperate, Anna accepted. They don't know that they will be locked up in the day. They don't know that they won't be able to say no to which sex acts are required of them. They don't know they'll be beaten. They don't know that they could be murdered. They don't know they could be gang raped. They don't know really what they will be getting into. Anna was trapped. Though she came here willingly, according to international law, the moment she lost her freedom, she became a victim of human trafficking. Me 
me greatly. Uh, and I know, you know, one thing that Anna would do is she would carry around a little video of her baby on her phone just to, um, to look at, just to remind her that there's light at the end of the tunnel and she's got to get back. But there's one question Anna can't answer. She has no idea where the Uzbeks are holding her. The task force must find out. Fast. She has just heard that she and some other women are going to get rotated by the trafficking gang down to uh, Malaysia, where they're going to even have less chance of escaping. So she sees this as her one and only opportunity. To discover the Uzbek hideout, everyone on the team begins tapping their sources. They uncover half a dozen leads. The best is an apartment building not far from the Grace Hotel. The Anti-Human Trafficking Division begins a 24-hour undercover stakeout. They need a breakthrough. The Uzbeks are not operating alone. Behind them are shadowy figures from the Middle East who may be involved in far more than sex trafficking. Some of the mamasan, some of the controllers who've been hired to control these women, um, oftentimes have these uh, Iranian boyfriends who we're hearing from a number of people are involved in trafficking in ice, uh, methamphetamines, and who knows what else those guys are involved in. It's a possibility that makes General Chanvut's latest discovery even more chilling. The Uzbek's operations have expanded. Pattaya is another prime destination for sex tourists and General Chanvut's next target. Pattaya, Sin City, 100 miles south of Bangkok. At its heart is a half-mile stretch of beer bars, go-go clubs and sex for sale. There are 27,000 commercial sex workers concentrated here. Most do the work willingly, so it's the perfect cover for the Uzbeks and their sex slaves. General Chanvut and his team have intelligence that the Uzbek traffickers are bringing in underage girls. So the general is setting a trap to catch the ring in the act. All we need really is the conversation between you and the pimps uh -huh. and um, any other information, visual or sound that you can get. An undercover will order a young Uzbek woman to the hotel. It's his job to film the girl and her pimp. Give us a call if any problems, otherwise we'll be looking at you from afar and then we'll wait till you're done. Okay. On the other side of Pattaya, task force partner, the Thai special team, is also in action. They're staking out a hotel close to the downtown strip. According to them, this is the Pattaya headquarters of the Uzbek ring. The special team has discovered that from here, pimps transport women to hotels around the city. One of them is General Chanvert's hotel, where his sting has begun. The undercover immediately gets an excellent shot of the pimp. It's the same man captured on film by the special team. And back in his room, he finally gets the girl on camera. Uh, where are you from? Um, India. No, you're not Indian. <laughs> With his job done, the undercover tells the girl he's changed his mind. Okay. This is a tip, okay? Okay. <laughs> He gives her some extra money and sends her home. Back at the Uzbek base, the special team have identified the man in charge of delivering these girls, a Thai fixer dubbed M1. They also have another breakthrough. 
they single out the Uzbek woman running the Pattaya organization. The task force now has new evidence that could help them bust the Uzbeks. And back in Bangkok, the Anti-Human Trafficking Division confirms that this is the apartment where the ring is holding Anna. For the first time, Operation Graceland has a chance to rescue more than a dozen Uzbek women. In a local hotel, they prepare to hit the Uzbeks and gather evidence that could help them take down the ring. The raid is underway. The Anti-Human Trafficking Division heads for the Uzbek hideout. Anna is already safe. The police feared the ring might ship her to Malaysia, so an undercover rescued her. Get her! Get her! The raid takes the ring by complete surprise. The Thai police discover 13 women crammed into the room. The Thai cops have just uh, gone into the room to do a, what they call raid and rescue operations. The anti-human trafficking division tried to figure out which women are here voluntarily, which have been trafficked. Amid the confusion, some of the women try to get word out. <laughs> The police refuse, but the controllers still try to keep the women from talking by threatening them in Uzbek. At the police station, the women are still allowed to stay together, and the confusion continues. But the women stick to their story, many of them too scared of the ring to admit they've been trafficked. I want to know, who's your boss? I want to know if you were forced to come here, or you came here, or you came here. What, what do you do? Grace Hotel. What I do? I speak for you. I am a business lady. But the police do get confirmation that the women are part of a sex ring. I'm working for a business. You don't understand? And why? What do you mean? Why do you mean? Prostitutes are prison rights. What do you mean? I am a prostitute. I am a prostitute. I am a prostitute. I am a prostitute. Why do you mean? Why do you mean? Finally, after nearly 10 hours of questioning, two women, codenamed N and D, admit to being trafficked. They agree to name their Uzbek Mamasan. They identify a woman codenamed Sharlo, the same one who's tried all night to make a phone call. N and D are probably not the only victims of sex trafficking here tonight, but they're the only ones who ask for help. Annie Dieselberg agrees to put them in a private shelter to protect them from the trafficking ring. It doesn't take long for the ring to strike back at N and D. I had a call from the CI who said that these two girls look to be in danger. There's somebody in hot pursuit of them now. N and D are a major threat to the Uzbeks. If the women testify, they could destroy the ring. The task force is in jeopardy. The two key witnesses are scared for their lives. If they refuse to testify, Charlo could go free. 
After nearly six months of work, Operation Graceland is in danger of collapsing. Without new evidence against her, the police release Charlo, the Uzbek Mamasan. But the task force gets a break. She's met by someone they know. His code name is Moat. He's the Middle Eastern man who was hunting for N and D. Galster believes he's Charlo's husband and the ring's money man, one of the shadowy figures behind the Uzbeks. The special team has been searching for Moat for months. Now they set up surveillance to track him. He leads them right back to the Grace Hotel. The special team discovers that Moat operates out of the hotel cafe. Running a rolling stakeout, they notice that he's connected to two other men. To uncover their role in the ring, the special team puts both men under intensive surveillance. Weeks into the Bangkok and Pattaya operations, the special team calls Steve Galster to a deserted hotel for a briefing. Even he's not allowed to see their faces. The special team has identified the head of the Pattaya operation and her Central Asian supply line. He also gets a look at the Bangkok surveillance footage. And the men connected to Moat and the Uzbek ring. It's great information. Who's the boss, you know, who's marketing the women, who's handling the money, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very impressive. For the special team, it's also very personal. Back in Bangkok, Charlo returns to court. N and D arrive for the first time. Both women are under tremendous pressure. Facing death threats from the Uzbek trafficking ring, N and D change their stories. It's been a bad day for the case against Shaho uh, because the two people testifying against her, the two main witnesses, uh, have flipped their stories completely and basically perjured themselves. After half a year of work, the case against Shaho and the Uzbek ring is crumbling and the stress is mounting. Steve Galster is aware that instead of helping women like N and D, he may be putting their lives in greater danger. Okay, they're going to put somebody in prison for a little while, maybe, but at what expense? It's extremely hard to take down traffickers without having victims testify against them. But we got to give it a try, and it requires getting inside, surveilling very professionally, not letting them know that you're coming, no leaks. And that's exactly why we've gone to the special team to bring these guys down. And the special team is already working on a new lead. They have information that a member of the Uzbek ring may be vulnerable. Rehearsals for a sting operation are underway. The success of Operation Graceland now depends on them. At a secret base, the special team is making preparations. There's been a breakthrough in Operation Graceland. The task force has enough evidence to back a bust on a member of the Uzbek trafficking ring. 
We're in basically the 23rd hour here. This is the final stage, getting ready to finally take down the, uh, the human traffickers who are behind this whole Uzbek thing. The special team is planning a surgical strike. The target is one of the top ties in the ring. He's highly dangerous, and the assault team will be taking no chances. A force of 20 men will pluck the man known as M7 from his car and hope to use the threat of jail time to turn him into an informant. In other words, get him to uh, provide information so they can climb the ladder toward the top, which is the hardest and longest but most important thing that they got to do. team has got the call uh, that one of the members of the trafficking ring has been identified and located. <clears throat> so now uh, this is a stealth search and capture operation. Steve Galster's job is to follow one of the special team vehicles and wait for the signal to move in. Just off the road, he spots two vehicles. Then, the assault team moves in. They've got M7 and another member of this ring. Well, it's all worked according to plan. I gotta scoop them up. I think this is happening very fast. I got him. Every minute the special team spends here, they become more vulnerable. Within minutes, they're finished. The traffickers are taken away, and the operation is over. It doesn't take long for the special team to get M7 to assist them. Operation Graceland now has a direct line into the Uzbek sex trafficking ring and an unprecedented opportunity to take it apart piece by piece. Operation Graceland is not over. We've started to expose and unravel a network. I'd like to think that what we've done is punctured a hole and a big giant wheel driving this organized crime machine so it might actually look for a while like nothing's happened but if we keep punching away which we will i think we can bring this machine down to a grinding halt we got to keep going <laughs>